pH calculations for strong acids and bases is going to be the topic of this lesson. My name is Chad, and welcome to Chad's Prep, where my goal is to take the stress out of learning science. Now, in addition to high school and college science prep, we also do MCAT, DAT, and OAT prep as well. I'll leave links in the description for where you can find those courses. Now, this lesson's part of my new general chemistry playlist. I'm releasing several lessons a week throughout this school year, so if you want to be notified every time I post one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notification. All right, so in the last lesson, we dealt with pH calculations in a generic sense, and now we're actually going to deal with solutions. In this lesson, we'll deal with strong acids and bases, and then in the next one, we'll deal with weak acids and bases, and we'll find out that strong acids and bases are a lot easier to deal with here. So uh, before we dive into the actual math here, I just want to point something out and say, point out, let's say we've got a beaker here, and this beaker is full of water. And my question for you is that in this beaker full of water... How much H plus is already in that beaker? What concentration? So, and notice if you've got pure, pure water, I might ask you, you know, well, you know, if you ordered the, the purest water on the planet, and you got a bottle of it. And then I asked you, well, how much dog hair is in there? Well, you, you hopefully say like zero or how much, you know, of any other contaminant is in there? Well, hopefully zero. Um, and the idea is that, well, there's not zero H plus and there's not zero OH minus either. So because water, again, auto-dissociates like we learned in the last lesson, and so there's going to be 10 to the 7 molar H plus, and there's going to be 10 to the set, I'm sorry, 10 to the negative 7 molar H plus and 10 to the negative 7 molar OH minus as well. So the idea is there's not zero. And so when you add a strong acid or a strong base, you're either adding something that's going to contribute more H plus or something that's going to contribute more OH minus. Now I bring this up because most of the time, the amount of strong acid or base that you're going to add is either going to contribute significantly more H plus than 10 to the negative seven molar or significantly OH minus, you know, more OH minus than 10 to the negative seven molar. And we'll just ignore the fact that water had any to begin with. However, as we'll see, uh, in one last example here for both the strong acid bases, we'll deal with what happens if you add considerably less than what water already has. So, and I just wanted to kind of set the stage for that a little bit. So we'll start with 0.1 molar HCl, and you've got to know that HCl is a strong acid, so it's going to dissociate virtually 100%. And so 0.1 molar HCl will produce both 0.1 molar H plus and 0.1 molar chloride. Now, obviously we don't care about the chloride, but we do care about the H plus here. So the H plus concentration is going to be 0 0.1 molar. So, and notice that is considerably larger than 10 to the negative seven molar. So we'll effectively just ignore the fact that water had a little tiny bit to begin with. This is a million times more. And this is traditionally what we do with most pH calculations for strong acids and bases. All right, so 0.1 molar is your H plus concentration. Is there a little more than that? Maybe just a teeny bit more than that. So, but 0.1 molar for all practical purposes. And to get the pH, we'll just simply take the negative log of this. And so we'll take the negative log of 0 0.1 and we will get a pH of one if you plug that into your calculator. And you might be like, well, how'd you do that in your head so fast, Chad? Well, 0.1 is 10 to the negative one. The log of 10 to the negative one is negative one and the negative log of 10 to the negative one would therefore be positive one and that's why we're getting a pH of one. Okay, so that's HCl and this would, you know, essentially work out this way for any of those strong acids if we had a 0.1 molar solution. Now, I do wanna point something out here that's special here. So H2SO4 is our only polyprotic strong acid. It has two acidic H's, but you might also recall that we said that only the first one dissociates completely. Only the first one is strongly acidic. The second one only dissociates to a small extent. It's a weak acid instead. And so as a result, this is gonna dissociate completely to give H plus and HSO4 minus, but then this HSO4 minus will dissociate to a small extent a little further to give H plus and SO4 two minus. So, but what we're ultimately going to do is we're gonna ignore this contribution almost entirely. The amount of H plus we'll get from this is gonna be so much less than what we get here that we can effectively ignore it. Now, here's the deal though. If we've got 0.1 molar H2SO4, and I said, what's the H plus concentration? Well, it's probably more accurate to say that it's gonna be approximately 0.1 molar and not exactly 0.1 molar. But truth is, it is going to be just a little bit higher than 0.1 molar in this case. So, 
you know, between these two, this is almost exactly 0.1 molar. This is going to be technically a little bit higher, like 0.1001 or something like that. Uh, nothing you're ever going to have to calculate, but if, I, if you know, I said which of the following has an H plus concentration that's slightly greater than 0.1, you'd point at the H2SO4, not the HCl. All right, so and with that being the case, then we'll take the negative log of that yet again, and we'll say that the pH is approximately one. But keep in mind that as your H plus goes up, your pH goes down. And so technically, we'd probably expect the pH to not be exactly one, but to be just below one, like 0.997 or something like that. Cool, and again, we're not gonna calculate an exact number. We're still, you know, if you were asked to determine the pH, you'd come out with one. Now, if you had a question that said, which of the following has a pH that's exactly equal to one? Well, I'd definitely choose the HCl before the H2SO4. Or if you had one that said the pH is just slightly below one, that's when you choose the H2SO4 over the HCl. All right, so now let's deal with this guy right here. This is a ridiculously low concentration of a strong acid. You might think of this as like putting a drop of HCl in your swimming pool. Should you expect the pH to change? Well, probably not of your entire swimming pool or in a lake or something like that, right? So if you look, the amount of HCl, strong acid we're adding, 10 to the negative 10 molar, is a thousand times less than the H plus that's already in water. And so the contribution we're making by adding, you know, just a teeny tiny bit of this strong acid is pretty insignificant. And so for all practical purposes, your H plus concentration is not gonna be 10 to the negative 10. It's still gonna be roughly 10 to the negative seven molar from what water is contributing, and therefore your pH is still gonna be approximately seven. Now, it might come down to like 6.999 or something like that, but it's for all practical purposes, it's seven. And this is kind of a tricky question that comes up every once in a while. And we don't often, don't, don't often cover it explicitly, so I wanna take the time to do it. But oftentimes we just say, take the concentration of your strong acid, Know that that is your concentration of H plus and take the negative log. Well, again, that's true as long as your concentration of strong acid is still considerably higher than 10 to the negative seven, like 10 to the negative four or higher or something like that. But every once in a while, a professor tries to slip this kind of thing in where they give this really low concentration. And what you want is usually considerably lower than 10 to the negative seven molar, like 10 to the negative 10, 10 to the negative 11, 10 to the negative 12, something along those lines. And for all practical purposes, that's not really going to influence the the pH in any significant way, and the pH is still going to be approximately seven. Let's take a look at strong bases. All right, so now we've got strong bases here. We're gonna start off with the most famous strong base, sodium hydroxide, and just like we had 0.1 molar HCl, now we're gonna have 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. It's gonna dissociate completely. In this case, to give Na plus and OH minus, and it's really only the OH minus we care about. So, and in this case, because it dissociates completely with this one-to-one -one ratio, you're gonna get 0.1 molar OH minus. Cool, and now that we've got the hydroxide, you take the negative log of this, but it's not gonna give you the pH, it's gonna give you the pOH. And so in this case, the negative log of 0.1 is one. And we've got one extra step if we really wanna come out with the pH then at this point, which is, pretty common. And so in this case, we'll subtract from 14 because pH and pOH always add up to 14. And so you're going to get a pH of 13. And so we find out this is pretty common. When you're finding the pH of bases, you got that one extra step because you're going to find the concentration of hydroxide instead of H plus. And then when you take the negative log, you get the pOH instead of the pH. So then you get that one extra step to subtract from 14 to get the pH. This will be common with bases in general. We'll see it with weak bases in the next lesson as well. All right, this next one's a little bit tricky. So if you notice, we went back over here, we covered H2SO4, the only polyprotic strong acid we had. We found out that only one of the H is dissociated completely, the other one to such a small extent that we pretty much ignored it. Well, that's not gonna be true with our group two metal hydroxides. Up to their solubility limit, both hydroxides fully dissociate here. So both of them, and you need to know the difference here. So with H2SO4, 0.1 molar H2SO4, 0.1 molar H+. Not going to be true here because for every barium hydroxide, you get twice as many hydroxides. Both dissociate completely, and therefore your hydroxide concentration is going to be double that 0.1 molar. So in this case, 0.2 molar. And so now we'll do our pOH as the negative log of that. And negative log of 0.2... Probably not something you want to do without a calculator. In fact, I'll pull out the calculator. 
we'll take the negative log of 0.2 and we're going to get, well, I'll round it to 0 0.7. Cool. And again, one extra step to get the pH. We'll subtract from 14 and 14 minus 0.7 is going to be 13.3. So that's how that works. Again, big difference. Really tricky way you can ask this on an exam is instead of, you know, giving you the formula of barium hydroxide, you could just say, what's the pH of a solution of 0.1 molar barium hydroxide? And if you just spell it out, you got to realize if student, you know, if you don't realize that, oh, this is BaOH2, and you're going to get twice as many hydroxides, a lot of students just realize, oh, that's a strong base, so OH is 0.1. No, no, no. In this case, the OH concentration would be 0.2, so be careful. Shows up a time or two. And then finally, 1 times 10 to the negative 10 molar NaOH. And this is similar to what we saw with the 1 times 10 to the minus 10 molar HCl. You're adding so much less hydroxide than what's already present in pure water that this effectively makes no difference. And so in this case, your hydroxide concentration is not going to be 10 to the negative 10 molar. The water already has 10 to the minus 7 molar. And so what we've added on top of that is insignificant. We'll just ignore that entirely. And so the POH is still going to be approximately 7, which means the pH will also be approximately 7 as well. And maybe I should have put an approximate symbol back here as well. Now, note here the pH is about 7, but again, it's going to be just slightly on the basic side. It might be 7.01, whereas here... The pH is approximately 7, but it's slightly on the acidic side, maybe like 6.99. Cool. That's how this works. That's strong acids and bases. Because they dissociate completely, calculating the H plus concentration and OH minus concentration is pretty straightforward. We'll find out in the next lesson that it's a major pain in the butt, compar comparatively speaking, to find the H plus and OH minus when a weak acid or weak base only dissociates partially. And we'll go back to talking about equilibrium and things of this sort. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, the thumbs up button, best thing you can do to support the channel, lets YouTube know to share this with other students as well. If you're looking for practice problems on acids and bases, check out my general chemistry master course. It includes over 1,200 practice questions. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. A free trial is available. Happy studying.